discipline of the world. The trenches had slashed a gaping wound across the face of Europe, a psychological injury which would leave scars for decades. Dadaism was formed in 1916, the year of the Battle of Verdun. Their provocative cult of nothing blew a radical wind of protest through the literary and artistic circles of Europe. All the misery of a broken Europe was encapsulated in Picabia's tirade. Honor is bought and sold like a bit of off. Dada feels nothing. It is nothing. Nothing, nothing. Like your hopes, it is nothing. Like your paradise, it is nothing. Like your idols, it is nothing. Like your politicians, nothing. Laban returned to Germany. He was appointed director of the National Ballet. It was his first official position. After 1921, he settled in Hamburg. He was a director of a school and a company named Tanzbühne Laban. It was in this company that Kurt Jos was first seen. Kurt Jos was not yet a dancer. Laban had nonetheless enrolled him in his company. His personality carried more weight than his technique. became Laban's collaborator as Wiegmann had been eight years previously. He filled out Laban's theories. Working within the Laban scales, he concentrated on movement expression. Unusually, he choreographed a male duo. He was appointed choreographer of a public theater where he met future colleagues, the composer Fritz Cohen and the designer Hein Heckroth. Laban's theories known in professional circles and for the first time introduced the term dance theater, dance theater. In 1927, with Sigurd Leder, he created a dance department in the Essen Academy, the Volkswagenschule. His lessons integrated elements from classical ballet. At the same time, he founded his own company. In 1928, he organized the Congress of German Dancers. He believed that modern dance should incorporate elements from its heritage, including those of the classical, whereas Mary Wiegmann believed that expressionist dance and classical dance were incompatible. Wiegmann had settled in Dresden and formed a school and company of her own. She continued to make use of space as Laban had taught her to, adding to that concept the mystique of her instinct and a more dramatic use of gesture. German Romanticism was found in Wiegmann's choreography, as in the theatrical productions of Max Reinhardt and in the cinema of Murnau, Fritz Lang and Pabst. The same contrasts in the use of light, the same dramatic use of gesture, the same allure of the irrational.
After the defeat of the Spartacists, who had sown seeds of hope in the wake of the Russian Revolution, Germany's big cities made it a center of modernity. In the future, Berlin would become a metropolis attracting both intellectuals and artists, among them Francis Bacon. Each day, new theaters, new cabarets would spring up. People were moved by Anita Berber, the nocturnal goddess of an elegant despair, and were amused by Valeska Gert, who brought her political satire onto the contemporary stage. Berlin's amazing dynamism at that time was portrayed in Alexander Doblin's novel, Berlin Alexanderplatz and in Steinberg's film, The Blue Angel. The frenzied pace of the beginning of the century and its excessive interest in the psyche were now replaced by a desire for clarity. Germany was to be rebuilt. This would be completed using the new principles of architecture from the school of the Bauhaus. For their first director, Walter Gropius, architecture was a question of making domestic and industrialized society, which he integrated into everyday life. For the members of the Bauhaus, the excesses of mechanization became creative material. Out of this alliance between man and the machine, industrial art was born. Clay, Kandinsky and Mahali Naj all taught at the Bauhaus and also the painter Oskar Schlemmer, the founder of an amazing ballet company. Inspired by the impersonality of the puppet, he combined geometric form with abstract movement in the triadic ballet. was aware of this trend. Her choreography was characterized by stark, simple line and stylized gesture. In 1929, she entered into a new phase with a huge choral fresco, Totenmal. Imposing masses of figures were moved across the stage to create a total and convulsive performance. It was an almost religious vision of theater through which a German aspiration towards a form greater than the community began to break through. In the beginning of the 30s, modern dance held a more important position than classical ballet in Germany. This was unique in Europe. For the first time, an experimental dance form was accepted into the official circuit of public theaters and opera houses. Laban held the pole position. His pupils formed schools in Venice, Budapest, Rome, and Anvers. The ballet's youth were a triumph on Broadway, and the school in Essen became international. Wiegmann was head of two schools in Germany, and one of her pupils formed another in America. Dancers trained by Wiegmann took German dance throughout the world. Yvonne Georgi, Gret Paluka, and Harold Kreuzberg, who would link the power of the expressionist with the control of the classical.
From abroad, German dance seemed to ride the crest of a tidal wave. However, it was now forced to confront internal economic and political difficulties which were to prove fatal. The economic crisis had brought great suffering to Germany. Throughout all classes of society, there was a hatred of the power of money and international capitalism mixed with anti-Semitism. With the help of a forceful propaganda campaign full of lies, the National Socialist Party, led by Adolf Hitler, was ready to take power. In the world of dance, Kurt Joos would be the first to suffer the consequences of this. Neither Laban nor Wiegmann had paid much attention to social issues in their works. In contrast, the choreography of Kurt Joos was an echo of reality and highlighted a critique of the social order. In 1932, he had already raised the issue of social difference in his ballet, Big City, where the workers danced an old-fashioned waltz, while the bourgeoisie chose a fashionable Charleston. There was a method of moving appropriate to each social class. However, the green table above all others enabled Yost to articulate his criticism of society through satire. This work would make him famous. The Green Table plays out the implacable process of linking the chain between the worlds of money and war. The grotesque figures of the diplomats sit around the table, a game of roulette on which the destiny of mankind is played out. The despair of the mother, the young girl's innocence put up for sale, the idealism of the young man destroyed. The spectacle of war which makes each man's destiny ugly and vile. Nyosa's ballet reworked the medieval traditions of grotesque dance. In this work, the figure of death bore the colors of war. Death decided each man's fate.
green table, Laban wrote to Yoth, I see a great hope emerging in your work. You have found a language whose movement is able to express in a simple way secular and fundamental concepts which can only be expressed through dance. The piece was premiered in Paris. It was hardly performed in Germany because the political climate around Yoth deteriorated increasingly quickly. Adolf Hitler came to power in January 1933. In February, he used the burning of the Reichstag as a pretext to eliminate the communist opposition. In March, he took hold of all reins of power. In May, the rights of assembly and freedom of expression were curtailed. The Bauhaus school closed. The first laws on racial segregation systematically cast the Jews out of all social and intellectual life. It marked the beginning of the pogroms, the raids on the Jewish ghettos. Germany was brought to heel under National Socialism. The music for the Green Table was composed by Fritz Cohen. The Nazis demanded that Joost part from his composer and all of his Jewish colleagues. He refused, and from now on was openly anti-fascist and pacifist. Violence had sent his Jewish colleagues away, so Joost took advantage of a tour abroad to emigrate with his company. Many intellectuals and artists emigrated at the same time. Fritz Lang, Max Reinhardt, Bruno Walter. After traveling for a short while, Yus and his family were welcomed at Dartington Hall in England. Dartington was a medieval manor. A couple of utopian millionaires had transformed it into a progressive center for agriculture, education, and artistic creativity. It did not take Yos and later long to reestablish a school, a folk song shula in Utopia. The reputation of their ballet was enormous, and this school quickly took on an international dimension. At Dartington, in these ideal conditions, Yost created several new works, Spring Tale, Chronica, and Ballade. Meanwhile, Laban and Wiegmann stayed in Germany. Since 1930, Laban had been the ballet master at the Berlin Opera. He was still an official artist. When Yost chose exile, Laban was choreographing Tannhäuser, directed by Toscanini, for the Bayreuth Festival. In 1934, he was appointed director of the Deutsche Tanzbühne, but the bodies which had become alive through his free dance were transformed under Nazism. They became the submissive bodies of gymnasts. In 1936, the opening of the Olympic Games was held in Berlin. Laban presided over the International Festival of Dance. The choral dances he had composed for the occasion were carried out by dancers from all over Germany. All were trained in kinetography which was a way of writing choreography devised by Laban. It was based on the model of music scores and enabled movement to be instantly read. Goebbels came to the dress rehearsal and forbade the performance. However, there was a clear interest for the Nazis in his system of choreographic writing. Kinetography was admirably suited to the style of Hitler's shows his processions of flags, gymnastic displays, and mystical monumental parades. Laban was asked to collaborate officially with the regime. He refused. 
destitute, he fled and joined Yost in England. In the 30s, Mary Wiegmann was still the leading representative of expressionist dance in Germany. Her works were filled with the great German romantic myths, which were also claimed by national socialism, and the loss of the individual destiny under the might of the collective will. She presented a large-scale choral work, The Dance of Death, for the second part of the opening ceremonies of the Young Olympics, while in the first part, Harold Kreutzberg performed the dance of the weapons. At the same time, she was asked to choreograph a work to the glory of Hitler. Before she was given the chance to refuse, the National Socialist Party singled her out. Her school was put under supervision and her works were declared decadent. However, Mary Wigman decided not to leave Germany. The ideological crackdown intensified. In 1937, when a double exhibition was organized, the official art, which was authentically German, was set against the degenerate art, which gathered together the abstract and expressionist painters Clay, Kandinsky, Gross, and Kokoschka. The National Socialist Bewegung, after a long time of endlich with the Führung des Reiches betraut wurde, sind noch nicht six Jahre vergangen. Das Kulturprogramm des Neuen Reiches ist von einer einmaligen Großartigkeit in der Geschichte unseres Volkes. Einer der ersten Zeugen des nationalsozialistischen kulturellen Aufbauwillens, der allein mehr wiegt als das Gestreppel aller demokratischen Zeitungen der Welt zusammengenommen. Events ran onwards. In 1938, with the Anschluss, Austria was occupied. On the 1st of September 1939, Poland was invaded. Two days later, war was declared. The land war began. In 1942, under the bombardment of the Allied planes, Mary Wiegmann choreographed Tanz der Nierbe, Dance of Nierbe, and gave her last performance on stage in Abschied und Dank, Farewell and Thanksgiving. In the same year, Hitler decreed the final solution. The frenzy of a single madman had now become collective. An Tanzmusik Unterhaltungsmusik, diese Kinder der leichteren Muse dürfen sie bei Telefonkontaktplatten den Welt. At the end of the war, Germany was put on trial. Nazism had made German dance unpopular. The war had routed the expressionist movement. The capitulation of the National Socialists finished it off. Expressionist dance retired into obscurity. to dance in conditions which became more difficult each day, Dora Hoyer committed suicide. 